So let's learn about keywords in Python. Keywords are basically those reserved words in Python which have special meaning. For example, uh, uh, if, if, uh, let's look at a few keywords and of course keywords cannot be used as variable names or function names or any other identifier. Of course keywords are case sensitive. Uh, if, if you already know C, C++ or Java, there are keywords like if, else, etc. In um, And uh, I think in C we also have uh, other keywords like for, right? All these are reserved words which have a specific meaning in the language and hence you cannot use it, use those words the way you would, you would want, right? So let's look at a bunch of keywords that are there in Python. So to do that, um, Okay, uh, this might look a little alien to you, this, side, this sort of syntax, but let me give you a quick overview of what this is. We'll go and understand this, what an import means a little later in the course on, um, on what import actually means. But simply put it, uh, since this is the first snippet of code that you're looking at, import keyword is sort of like hash include stdio.h in C. Uh, I'm assuming most of you have some exposure to C. So where you're, here you're including a header file and all the functions that come with it. Here import keyword is basically saying that I want to import this package or module uh, into, into this code snippet, right? And then your print is just like your printf, right, in C. Uh, so you're just saying print keyword dot kw list. So kw list here is a list. We'll, we'll understand what lists are a little while later. List is a special data structure which can hold uh, a bunch of values, okay? Uh, you can, for now, you can think of it like an array, just for now. Of course, there, is a, there are differences between lists and arrays, but for now, just think of it as an array uh, for simplicity. So I'm saying print the keyword list. The moment you say this, you get you get this bunch of keywords. So false is a keyword, none is a keyword. Just like, just like C, you have if as a keyword. You also have else as a keyword. You have for as a keyword. There, there are more keywords here than in C, of course. In C, you don't see the keyword class, right? Uh, in C, you don't see the keyword raise. Right? Of course, you do see the word return for function return and things like that. Right? You don't see the word yield in C. And if you want to know how many how many keywords are there, uh, it's also very simple. You're just simply again printing. Uh, you're using the function len, L-E-N, which stands for length. So you want to know the length of this keyword list. Right? Keyword dot keyword list. So this is the name of the module in which this key, this list is present. And you're just saying keyword dot kw list, which prints the uh, which prints the length of the keyword list. And there are 33 keywords in, in Python. So by the way, I'm using Python 3 here. I strongly recommend all of you use Python 3 because in my notebook, and by the way, this is this is a IPython notebook. It's very interactive. For example, let's see, I can, I can, I can run this code here. I can just run this cell like this. Right? I just ran it. Suppose if I remove this line, I'll show you how to do comments later. But if I just remove that line, that line goes away, right? I'll show you some interactive code as and when needed. But for now, I'll just go through the code snippets that I've already written, just so that I don't screw it up in between. Uh, having said that, uh, let's look at identifiers. Now, what is an identifier? Identifier is basically names given to things like variables, functions, or classes in Python. Any name that you can use, any variable name that you can use. And there are a bunch of rules on how to write identifiers. So identifiers can be a combination of lowercase, A to Z, uppercase, capital A to capital Z, digits or underscore, okay? So for example, if you say ABC underscore 12 equals to 12, this is valid because what we have are lowercase alphabets. We are using the underscore. We are using a bunch of numbers, right? The next thing is an identifier cannot start with a digit. For example, let's see this example here. Let's go and see this snippet. For example, if I say one, two underscore ABC equals to 12, right? And let me just run it, okay? It says this is an invalid token. If, if you notice this error, it says 12 underscore ABC is invalid. So what if I just remove the ABC? Can I start it with a number basically? Oh, it says 12 ABC is invalid syntax, right? So you can't start an identifier like a variable name with a, uh, with, with a numeric symbol like a digit between zero to nine, right? But you can, you, can, you can put it anywhere. So for example, here I can say, this is perfectly okay. You just can't start it. So here you're getting the error for global and not for A12. Right? Similarly, you can't use keywords as identifiers. So if you go up and little and, and notice here, we do have global, uh, where is global here? Global is a keyword, right? So you can't use key, uh, you can't use keywords as variable names. That's the third rule of writing identifiers. 
right? So for example, if whenever I write global equals to one, so here, what did I write? I tried to give a variable name as global and assign it a value of one. It says this is invalid syntax, right? The rules are simple, okay? You can use small a to z, capital A to Z, digits or underscore. You can't start it with a digit, right? And keywords cannot be used as identifiers. Very simple rules, nothing very fancy there, right? Or oh, there, there is another bunch of rules. For example, you can't use special symbols like exclamation, ampersand, hash, dollar, etc. in identifiers. For example, if you write this, if you say anywhere, not just not necessarily at the start, anywhere in the uh, anywhere in the variable name or an identifier, you can't do that. If you say a ampersand equals to ten. It says can't you oh, sorry it says invalid syntax right this is this is my comment okay we'll see and by the way uh, if you have just noticed by looking at a small snippets of code here you'll notice that python gives very very readable uh, errors it's very very easy to interpret what they are right we'll see more of this as we go a little later uh, as we as we understand how to debug things uh, how to use more complex and interesting concepts in python this is we're just getting warmed up here 